All right, welcome back to Stella Diaz has something to say. We're going to read chapter four. If you remember where we left off, that um, Stella was really excited about her new friend, and she was hoping that she would speak Spanish. So it says, Ms. Morales is standing by the front door of the library to greet us one by one when we arrive for today's library visit. She's wearing her long pearls and a bright orange sweater. And on her left arm, she's holding her stuffed goose named Lucy, which everyone gets to honk when they leave the library. Hola, Stella, Ms. Morales says. Buenos dias, Ms. Morales. I say quietly, but I squeal inside. Ms. Morales has been our librarian since kindergarten. The best thing about Ms. Morales, apart from the fact that she speaks Spanish, is that she's so smart and loves sharing books with us. At the beginning of the year, when I was getting started, really interested in fish, she showed us about books on Jacques Cousteau, a famous ocean explorer, and now I love reading about him. And here's a picture of Jacques Cousteau right there. Welcome, Miss Bell's class, she announces as soon as all of us are sitting in front of the computer. Miss Morales is full of spunk and a little different from your usual librarian. I think most librarians don't have purple streaks in their hair. Instead of saying hello back, we wave our hands in the air. Miss Morales says proper librarian etiquette calls for no loud voices. Miss Morales waves back and continues. I hear you are finding books for your sustained reading. Now you remember how to use the catalog, right? Just find the Dewey Decimal System, write it down, and look for a book on the shelf. If you have any questions, I am here. The Dewey Decimal System is how the books are organized at the library. If it were up to me, I would just organize them by color, like my colored pencils or the height of the books at my home. Still, it really does help when searching for books. With the power of Dewey, I find the perfecto book. I grab it and head over to a big table by myself. The pictures are so beautiful, I want to dog ear the pages, but I only do that with books at home. Ms. Bell comes up to me, crouches down, and says in a quiet voice, What book are you reading, Stella? What Lives in the Ocean by Tonya Mickelson, I say. Sounds positively fascinating, she whispers. It is. See the octopus there? Did you know that an octopus doesn't have any bones and has three hearts? I have to draw it later. It's just too cool looking. I heard an octopus named Paul became famous for predicting many of the winners of the World Cup. Wow, I exclaim. Miss Bell chuckles. She lifts her finger to her mouth. When I get excited, I speak louder than I realize. I think there will be a little time for drawing after library, she says before standing. I smile and keep reading about octopuses. It turns out that they are extraordinary escape artists. To escape from their enemies, they release a cloud of ink to help them disappear. Then, before they have no bones, they can maneuver through almost any nook or cranny. They can even escape through a hole about an inch wide. That would be really helpful skill to have. When it's time to go back to class, everyone says goodbye to Miss Morales and Lucy. Adios, Miss Morales and Lucy. I say as I give the stuffed goose a honk, honk, squeeze. I have to admit, even though I am in third grade and too old for this, it's still sort of fun. Lucy honks, and Miss Morales and I both smile. Hasta luego, Stella. When we get back to the room, everyone starts chatting about their books, except for me. I get started drawing my octopus. I'm about halfway finished, making sure I draw all eight arms the same size. When I hear a knock on the door, I look up, and Ms. Green, who works in the office, is at the door. Ms. Bell meets her and whispers. I hear Ben Shaw say to Chris Pollard, It must be the new kid. I drop my colored pencils. I got so carried away with the library and my drawing that I almost forgot. Then I see who is standing next to Ms. Green. It's a boy. And he has light brown hair, a frown, and he's totally different than I imagined. Class, Miss Bell says, this is our new student. Do you want to introduce yourself to the class? The new boy waves at everyone and says, howdy. 
I'm Stanley Mason. I just moved here from Dallas, Texas, or Tejas in Espanol. Ms. Bell says, Tejas? That's so far from here. Has anyone been to Texas? A few kids raise their hands. I actually was in Texas last year on our family road trip. We went to see the Alamo, and we even went to a cave where they took a picture of a dinosaur sculpture named Grendel. Here's the dinosaur right there. But I'm always too shy to speak up in class. Plus, the Alamo isn't really in Dallas. Stanley probably hasn't even seen it. Still, even if I weren't shy, I wouldn't be able to talk right now. I'm a little speechless. I can't believe Stanley speaks Espanol. He doesn't look like someone who would speak Spanish at all. The new kid I imagined had dark brown hair like me, not light hair, and she was a girl. Miss Bell says, now class, let's have everyone quickly introduce yourselves to Stanley. One by one, people stand. There are almost 10 people in front of me, and I feel nervous and a little sweaty. I want to make a new friend so badly, even if he is a boy. So, what if it is not at all the girl I had pictured in my head? He speaks Spanish like me. And more important, he's new. He could use a friend as much as I could. I could be his first new friend here. When it's my turn, I stand up. I feel myself turning roja. I freeze. I just read that some octopuses can paralyze their prey. Maybe Stanley is part octopus. Probably not. He looks like a normal boy with freckles, blue eyes, and a cool monkey shirt. I catch myself staring at him for a second. Hmm, me amo Stella, I say while looking away quickly. Sorry, I mean, I'm Stella. I say it even faster as I sit back down. I'm about to groan out of embarrassment when I feel my chair start to tilt backward. My eyes grow grande like an elephant, and everything slows down. I try to reach out to grab my desk, but it's too late. Crash! Before I know it, my feet are sticking straight up in the air and my back is on the ground. I have fallen down in front of Stanley. In front of everyone. I close my eyes as I hear the entire class laugh. I check my arms and legs. Nothing hurts. I think about staying on the ground, but decide to crawl up. I poke my eyes above my desk. Are you okay, Stella? Miss Bell is the only one not laughing. Yes, I whispered. I look at Stanley. He looks like he wants to laugh, but he's holding it in. There goes my new friend, I think. Who would want a klutz for a friend? I pull my chair back and sit down. On top of it, I can't believe I spoke Spanish instead of English. Doubly embarrassing. I stare at my drawing and think about escaping through a tiny hole or disappearing in a cloud of ink. Today, I really wish I were an octopus. And here's Stella. Can you imagine being that embarrassed, especially since she was so excited? All right. Well, I hope you enjoyed chapter four. Until we meet again.